Brothgar, how are duplicates made? Well, you see, when a duplicate wants to make another duplicate, all they do is they come on over here to the printing pod and extrude another one. It's as easy as that. In this case, I've got three different choices. Welcome to the base, Turner. Whee! Splat. And everybody's happy. However, if you want to make a duplicate in real life, it's a little bit more involved than that. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode here of Watch It Print. And that's what I'm going to be calling this little series here. I also have a YouTube channel named Watch It Print, but I've yet to upload any content to it. But when I do, it's going to be similar to this and also lessons learned about 3D printing and whatnot. So the very first step here is that I have a reference model that was kindly created by Death Wolf over here. And he actually made this little file. And if I go ahead and upload this, we can take a look at what the original file looked like that I was able to use. Now, this was very, very similar to the same sort of process that we did for the oxygen algae deoxidizer, which I'm still working on turning that into a bubble machine. This is just only so much time I got for everything, but that project is still in the works. And I figured, yeah, let's go ahead and make this duplicate while I've, while I've got this short moment of time in order to do that. So as we can see here, I have uploaded Meep here to my project folder and you can see this is what the original model looks like. However, if you were to take this model and just print it the way it is, the one thing that you would find is that there's going to be a lot of support structure that ne is needed to print this. So, you know, you get a lot of overhang right here or if you print it upside down, well then you got that entire platform. So the very first thing I wanted to do is split Meep from his base down here. So that's the first thing I did. As I split this mesh right here, kind of chopped his legs off and, and then reassembled the platform to create two separate bodies. So we have kind of the body that's down here on the bottom, which I, is its own body. And then I didn't really mess with Meep up top because he was already kind of, you know, nice and high quality, just like he is right now. The other thing I, I did is I also added some pockets down in the base so that when we do print off Meep, you can just stick them in his stand and he'll stay right there. So the next step after this is just re-exporting the pieces that I need to re-export as an STL. And then I take that and I put it inside of Cura or my slicing software. And that's what I got right here. So you can see Meep over here on the left and then the base over here on the right. If I wanted to print this stuff as the exact same color. And if you get the layer view, you can kind of see what the code would look like. I was doing some fun stuff here. Let me just go ahead and actually had some stuff to the shell so it looks a little bit more normal oh not 30 please no there we go three and what we can see here is i've now generated the code for the 3d printer in order to run it on over there and print things off however what we'd notice over here is that there's a lot of overhang so meep is actually going to be printed upside down on his head Zoom. So when I print them upside down, the amount of support material I need when I actually go to run that is far less. So you can see there, it's just a few lines that are kind of supporting his eyebrows, his eyeballs, and a little bit of his mouth, and apparently it looks like it wants to help out his belt as well. So that was the process that I used to create the very first print. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that result turned out. So the actual process of printing this was not without its problems. I have actually been trying to run an all metal hot end here, but unfortunately the genetic ooze is really just plain havoc with it. So what I'm actually talking about is the PLA inside of my all metal hot end tends to stick once I have a lot of retractions. So after a couple failed prints here, I just went back to the lined hot end and figured oh, I'll just have to fix that some other time. But you can see right there, suddenly it starts to jam up and then under extrude. All right, so here you can see the base printing out just fine. Now this is with an all metal hot end with PLA and it's, you know, since there's a lack of retractions, this example, it turns out just fine. So that just kind of goes to show that the same hot end can work in one situation, but not the other, which really goes to reinforce the same idea that I had, you know, when I first started this printer, and that is to have the right hot end for the right material at the right temperatures, and then just swap the hot ends as need be. So once I solved those few little problems there, this is what I ended up with. All right, so this was my first attempt at printing the Meep statue, and it turned out pretty good. Matter of fact, the base here, even though it's relatively eh, kind of plain looking, uh, it did turn out really smooth. You can see the ironing did a good job of here of smoothing out that top. The layers look 
okay. They're not real great. They're a little, maybe a little bit tight for a six millimeter nozzle, but it's it's turning out okay. The one thing that I'm not a big fan of is the embossed text here. It looks a little bit easier in the camera, but when you're looking at it in real life, it kind of just looks like this, which is really hard to read. So rather than embossing this, I'm gonna bring that text out so that it pops up a little bit more, and it's also a lot easier to paint it black or with a marker or whatever, just so that it shows up. Uh, also, the statue here needed to be glued to the base in order for me to stand on it, so I made the pockets deeper in the second model so that you wouldn't have to actually use any glue. You could just stick them in there, and then he stays. The biggest thing about this uh, that I want to correct is the seam. Now, I've got a pretty heavy seam going on with my current nozzle setup, so I could I could work on that to kind of reduce it, but for the sake of time, I'm actually just going to hide that seam, because you can see it's showing up here, right there, it's kind of showing up on that arm, but not that arm. It's just kind of creating an inconsistent booger on the model. So, what I'm going to do is actually use a user-specified seam, and I'm going to hide that on the back side of the model, so that the seam is more or less back here, where you're not going to be looking so then the front side will just end up clean. And even if I did optimize that seam, there's always going to be a seam somewhere. So and this is probably a good case where I actually just want to take that seam and hide it rather than, you know, try to perfect it. The last thing here is that when we're actually printing Meep upside down, <laughs> I don't really need this support. Uh, I ended up cleaning off more pieces of support that really weren't doing anything than anything else. So you can see like that's a little piece of support there. I mean, that's just not needed. And inside of here, it seemed like it's going to print just fine without the support. So scratch that and then cue it up to run again. I also wanted to make the base a little bit more interesting. My original plan was to actually use the oxygen not included logo and then kind of emboss that onto the surface to kind of create a, I don't know, like a little bit of a puck or something like that with their logo and everything showing there. Unfortunately, that was not really easy to do inside of Fusion 360. I also tried to take some text and wrap that onto a surface and that also was a long way from being as easy as it should be. So I just kind of avoided doing that and actually went with something else that was actually a little bit more interesting. Alright, so taking a look here at attempt number two. Wow, you can see this. This is pretty cool. Everybody always asks, is it hollow inside? And, and this is just a good example of, you know, what some of that infill can and sort of looks like. It doesn't always look this fancy. I kind of picked a more fancy mode, but yeah, it's basically that, but you know, you just don't really see it. It's all hidden on the inside. And then we can see that the seam trick I used turned out really good. I mean, the front side here is absolutely clean all the way up. No boogers at all. You can even see, you know, the model really did not need a lot of support. You can see a little bit of blob right at the top of Meep's eye there on both sides. I can clean that off. That's about the only artifact I've found thus far. If you take a look at the ear, no, it doesn't even show up there. Inside the mouth, maybe, but you can kind of pass that off as a tongue. <laughs> he might need dentures too, he's got something going on with his teeth. But besides that, I mean, 
that is a, a really quite clean model there. And then on the back side you can kind of see where this seam has been tied in. Some of it shows up on the arms either side, but mostly it's just on the back side there. So now, well I think I might just want to take some of this and put some black marker on it. Maybe that'll turn out alright. Alright, so it was kind of hard to get any sort of ink to really stick to the letters without getting on the background. So that didn't work quite as well as I thought. But when I started painting onto this, like with my dry erase marker, I found that if I kind of scrubbed against the grain like this, I could push that black into the back there and actually give it a kind of a, a grunge look. And I quite like that. That actually turned out pretty good. So you can see I've kind of made his eyeballs and stuff black and stuff like that. So here's what I'm going to do. In order to kind of make Meep's hair look more even, I've already kind of put a coat of dry erase on there. I'm just going to take my thumb and I'm just going to go ahead and, and scrub this direction on it. And what that's doing is it's pushing that dry erase into the cracks and crevices. So it's going to, going to lighten up a little bit, but it's still going to maintain a darker look than the stuff without uh, anything on it. Another thing I wanted to point out here is I did have a little bit of warping going on with the rate right where his hair goes from flat to, you know, and starts to taper like this. Printing a fillet like that without any support is kind of challenging. And you can see it's a little bit more molten here than it is over on the side. And that's because my current printer has two fans and the fans cooling from this side and this side, but not from this side or that side. So this is a little bit softer over here. And I'm running a fairly large nozzle, so I've got quite a bit of temperature that's going into here. Um, so when I'm done with my 3D printer design and it's actually released, it's going to have three fans so that I'm really cooling from multiple directions. This really, this problem only shows up when I'm printing things that are perfectly round like this for whatever, you know, well, for the reason of how air moves around, right? <laughs> oh, your head's too smooth, I can't do anything about it. I think I need to sandpaper it up. So I went ahead and scuffed up his head a little bit and then markered it. <laughs> it wasn't too nice to the marker, but bam, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. Throw Meep on his little stand right there. And would you look at that? That's pretty cool. I like it. So there you have it guys. That's how duplicates are made. You just 3D print them out of genetic ooze. So, I think this model turned out really good here. Look at that little Meep statue. Look at how happy he is. That's pretty awesome. Thank you to Death Wolf for modeling the reference model that I used to create this. You can actually find a link down there to Thingiverse and you can make one of these guys yourself if that's what you're interested in. I like it. It's going to end up on my shelf. Pretty fancy. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Watch It Print. And I'll see you again next time. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. And uh, um, have a great day. Wow, that was really stuck on there.